So today we are going to talk about this MXL and generality question. Here all true about this granulomatosis with polyangiitis except. So we have to find out out of the four options which one is not correct. Lung involvement points towards severe outcome. Number B is kidney involvement indicates severe outcome. Prednisolone with rituximab is treatment of choice in induction phase with severe renal manifestation. Number D is prednisolone with methotrexate is given in cases of normal renal function. So out of the four options, first we have to know what exactly is this granulomatosis with polyangiitis. It is nothing but Wegener granulomatosis. It is new name of Wegener granulomatosis. So in this case, lung involvement is far far more common than the lung involvement is far far more common than the kidney involvement. Lung involvement ranging around 90%, 85 to 90%, whereas kidney involvement is just 80%. Yet, we have to remember one important point that lung involvement is much more commoner but not associated with severe outcome. The most severe outcome is due to the renal failure and that is due to the kidney involvement. So this is the answer of this particular question. Now talking about the therapy, prednisolone with rituximab is treatment of choice in induction phase. Actually there are two phases of treatment, induction phase and maintenance phase. And with, with severe renal manifestation, we can give prednisolone with rituximab, which is obviously off letter being FD approved one. And due to the absolute uh, severe side effects, if there is not severe renal manifestation, we offer giving methotrexate. In, after giving methotrexate, we can give all, almost comparable uh, result. And in patient, uh, cases of normal renal function with a uh, wigner granulomatosis, we prefer methotrexate. And earlier, there was one drug, cyclophosphamide, was given used to be given, but of late it is seen the rituximab actually gives comparable or better res result than the cyclophosphamide. So we will prefer the rituximab in those cases where there will be severe renal function, when, uh, severe renal function defect. And one another important point, whenever we are giving rituximab or cyclophosphamide, we have to also give cotrimoxazole or dapson because there will be cytopenia and other side effects. And to counter that, and there are predilection to infection, to counter that, we have to add dapson or cotrimoxazole. We have to add dapson or cotrimoxazole. Now we are going to start to talk about a little about uh, Wigner, uh, Wigner granulomatosis. And actually it has three important manifestation. Three important manifestation. One is upper respiratory tract involvement. One is upper respiratory tract involvement. This is the mostly, this is the one area which is affected. 
in the range of even 95%. Second in the line is lower respiratory tract involvement. It is in the range of 85 to 90% lower respiratory tract involvement. And the third in the line is renal, renal involvement. It is the most severe, but it is not the most common, luckily. This is the most severe, but not luckily, it is not the most common. Earlier, without any treatment, patient used to die within one year. But with the treatment, the manifestation is not that severe anymore. Earlier, it used to die within one year, without any treatment. If, if we don't give any treatment, in those cases, the severity was earlier much, much severe. Right now, it is far, far more manageable with the advent of the new therapies. So if no treatment, the patient is expected to die within one year. So among upper respiratory tract, what are the areas which are going to be involved most? Firstly, it is going to be the nose. Nose is going to be involved. Then, apart from the nose, there will be involvement of ear. And also, there are going to be involvement of throat and mouth. Mouth and the throat. So let's see what are the more, more common manifestations of them. Here we can see septal perforation. Septal perforation is very, very common. There will be septal perforation and also depression of nasal bridge. This is known as saddle nose. Now in ear, there is otitis media with effusion. So, which is going to lead to conductive deafness and in due course, it can go to go up to sensory neural deafness. Conductive deafness, it can go up to sensory neural deafness. And in, in the mouth, there is a strawberry gingiva there will be strawberry gingiva and there is a throat there is a subglottic stenosis which is a very very characteristic finding very very characteristic finding apart from these three other areas which are involved and one is skin skin is involved is a very very common and one important manifestation of the, it is palpable purpura palpable purpura is very very common here also there are chances of formation of ulcer and vasospasm and splinter hemorrhage the next line is going to be eye. In eye, one manifestation is more commonly seen that is one well, that is seen in scleritis. Scleritis is seen in Wegener granulomatosis. Scleritis is seen and also keratitis and conjunctivitis. So these are very very common finding in the joints if we talk about joints there is both arthralgia and arthralgia and arthritis 
but we have to remember this is going to be non deforming arthritis not deforming arthritis this is non deforming arthritis apart from that nerves can be involved too nerves can also be involved peripheral nerves and it can lead to mononeuritis multiplex this is one of the cause of mononeuritis multiplex which is give, going to give him, give the shooting pain in git git there can be mesenteric vasculitis so we have to remember the git there can be mesentery there will be mesenteric vasculitis but it is far far rarely seen of late there was one question which organs were affected in which nerve and there was one of the option there was liver and liver is least likely to be affected in cases of oisner we have already talked about the renal manifestations here there will be hematuria and proteinuria hematuria and proteinuria and it is giving to the rise to the crescentic glomerulonephritis so there will be formation of rbc cast it is leading to rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis and ultimately renal failure that is the much much common more important cause of death if not treated renal failure and it can lead to death if not treated this is but nowadays it is not that common death within one year if not treated in the pathology aspect this is giving the granulomatous inflammation granulomatous inflammation this is going to be granulomatous and it is actually small vessel vasculitis wisner is mostly small vessel vasculitis small vessel vasculitis so what we have to remember it also can give to three things rather four there will be rise in esr there will be huge rise in ESR. ESR will be going to shoot up, and but there will be anemia, anemia. So the RBCs are going to be less. RBC is going to be less. WBC is going to be hugely increase. So there will be leukocytosis. WBC is going to be increased, and platelets are going to be increased, not decrease. It's going to be. thrombocytosis it is anka positive vasculitis and mostly towards the cianka it is cianka positive vasculitis which is mostly against protein s3 protein s3 but rarely few of them few percentage are against myeloperoxidase also
the rheumatoid factor is going to be positive and the complement levels complement levels are either going to be normal or it is going to be increased not decreased this can be a future question too complement level is going to be normal or it is going to be increased not decreased from the epidemiology aspect there are few things we should remember it is actually more in the whites than the blacks so it is going to be seen mostly in the white than the blacks May, there is equal pre, uh, predilection towards the male and female equally it is affected and though all the ages can be affected actually all the ages can be affected yet it is seen it is from the four to five decades four to five decades which are affected most rarely it is seen that a child or adolescents are going to be affected and we already have talked about the treatment part there are two phase of treatment and most mainstay is glucocorticoid or in or prednisolone along with that we can give rituximab which is fd up to 9 now and uh, till from 1970 onwards the drug which was used is cyclophosphamide cyclophosphamide and whenever we are giving this these are actually given in the cases of the patient coming with the severe renal failure or renal involvements okay patient having severe renal involvement in those cases these drugs are given but prolonged therapy with those drugs have some certain side effects which is uh, leading to the infections so in those cases we have to give either dapsone orally or we have to give cotrimoxazole otherwise in cases of normal renal function we can give prednisolone with methotrexate so that there is a overview of this particular topic wisner granulomatosis or granulomatosis with polyangiitis as it being renamed right now so we already have talked about those condition the condition that is seen in the wisner this is actually saddle nose deformity the depression of the nasal bridge this is before the operation and this is after operation correcting it this is the perforation of nasal bridge the bony perforation this is the strawberry gingiva here we are seeing absence of bony septum and this is very very characteristic finding subglottic stenosis this is very characteristic finding of late there are pictorial questions and these all can be pictorial questions in future here too there are very very quite a few important finding and there this is the proptosis the proptosis is due to orbital pseudo tumor this is a uniocular proptosis and this is due to 
orbital pseudotumor. This can come up as a pictorial question in future examination. And another important finding, much much commoner finding in uh, ophthal that is scleritis and keratitis along with conjunctivitis as I've already discussed. In the lung, there are bilateral nodular appearance bilateral nodular infiltrates which are repeatedly shown in the CT scan but this is the same thing same patient this is the x-ray of that patient it is seen in bilateral nodular infiltrates this is the RBC cast this is RBC cast This is showing the glomerular nephritis. Glomerular nephritis. This is RBC cast. And this is the dermal manifestation. This is palpable purpura. And as we have already talked about, this is the from granulomatous inflammation. This is a granulomatous multinucleated uh, cells are there. This is a granulomatous inflammation. And this is formation of crescentic glomerulonephritis. This is crescentic glomerulonephritis. So hopefully this uh, particular you have liked this particular presentation. Earlier already the presentations are there in the YouTube already. You can check that out in the YouTube uh, the link. We are already going to give the link in the for the video. And uh, there is a one uh, interesting video with the mnemonics and everything. Uh, that is pretty interesting one that I presented in the class. And the important thing is that not only the difference of the vasculitis in the large small and medium there are mnemonics also if you see the video you will figure it out it is already in the youtube and you can check the books uh, in the amazon you can find it out and there are other videos like uh, deep brain thrombosis to pulmonary embolism the all the m excellence videos and uh, you can check it in the facebook and twitter I hope you would like this particular video and found find it uh, found the uh, updates in the this Facebook and Twitter is helpful for you. Hopefully you are going to like it. Hopefully this, uh, this uh, particular presentation, particular updates are going to be helpful for you in future too. Thank you.